E2 pulley and table. So in this case, go ahead and do the sketch here. This was given in a problem, but I like to sketch it anyway, but I'm doing a solution. So some kind of a pulley there and here, this uh, is hanging another mass like that. So this just emphasizes that that's stationary. So you have mass one and you have mass two. And the problem is says find the acceleration and find the tension in the rope or a cable. So this is the sketch. And then we come over here to do the free body diagram or simply the force diagram. Notice I have two masses, so I need to have two diagrams. One for mass one, one for mass two. I also need to pick a direction. I'm gonna pick the direction to be down since this is gonna pull with gravity coming down and I need to emphasize there's no friction. So in other words, you can imagine that like on ice or something. That no friction, no friction anywhere, no friction, everything's sliding. So if that's gonna be plus like this, then for mass one, let's say I have here going to the right, the tension, I do have a normal force, the table holds it up, and there is also M1G. And then over for mass two, I have the weight, M2G going down and the tension, you know, pulling up. Newton's third law of action reaction, M2 pulls with T on M1 and one is pulling on T back, M2. So now we write down the equations. And the equations would be for the X direction, T is M1A, that's all you have there. So you're going to the right. And for the Y, you have N going up minus M1G equals zero. Not gonna really need that equation, but we're at the end anyway. And then over here, for the X, you basically have nothing. There's no, no X forces. And then for the Y, we have to be consistent down is plus, so this is going to the right plus goes with this down, so this M2G minus T is M2A. Notice that when you have a rope that's, that's taut and there's no slack, that you could anywhere, you can put, you can cut it and put a scale anywhere in there and you're gonna get the same result, the same tension. So if you put a scale there, like you're stretching it, you get the T, you measure the T. So you can think of it like the one T is pulling a scale, but the other T is like holding the scale in place so you can get a reading. So that's a little, little interesting to think about. Okay, then we use Newton's law. You add the equations, remember the trick? We're gonna add the equations. And if we do that, let's go ahead and write the two equations down that are relevant. You might say that, well, you're just substituting. Well, yeah, but I like to think about adding because in other cases, it's, it's, it gets more complicated, but the adding still works. So I have M2G, T's cancel, and this is equal to M1 plus M2, and that's going to be times the A, you know, M1 plus M2A. And then here, the acceleration is going to be M2 over M1 plus M2 times G. That's the answer. So that's the answer for 
one of the questions, and then the answer for the T, we can go ahead and use this first equation, M1A. So it's simply the same thing with the M1 in the numerator. So M1, M2, M1 plus M2 times G. That's so we're based, we're finished, basically finished. But now remember, I like to think of these problems. Let me go ahead and label this, the parts. Uh, we have here the equations, that's three, the equations. And then we had step four is the solve. So when I think of these problems in statics and dynamics, I'm thinking a sketch, I'm thinking a force diagram, I'm thinking equations, here are their equations of motion. In statics, they're equations of equilibrium. And then here I solve. But I also remember my IR mnemonic, which helps me remember that all problems are gonna have a question, an application, a reflection, and communication. Now, you might just consider the question, you know, is given here in the problem, and the application are these four steps that we did. And then the reflection is, are these reasonable? And when I communicate, I think significant figures, well, I don't have numbers here, but I can think dimensions. Let me do the communication, like dimensions first. Let me check that. And this is a reflection also, but I like to split it up to let R, the reflection B, is the answer reasonable. And for the communication B, are the units correct? Are the significant figures correct? Well, the units are correct because kilogram cancels kilogram, this ratio, and acceleration has the units of G, which is acceleration. That checks out. Here, if I put an M1 with the acceleration, where I have an extra mass, then I have an MG. That's it. That's a weight. That's, a, well, tension. Here is a formula for the tension, but it's, you know, MG is going to be Newtons. It's going to be acceptable for the tension the units. Okay, now are these answers reasonable? Now for the answers to be reasonable, what I'm going to think here, suppose that M1 is super, super large. If this becomes infinite in mass, that's not going to move. That's just going to hang there. Acceleration is going to be zero, and that's just going to hang there, like M, M2G. Well, let's see if that's the case. If I were to take the limit as M1 goes to infinity on the acceleration. Let's do the acceleration first. So this is the limit as M1 goes to infinity of M2 over M1 plus M2 times G. If M1 goes to infinity, you'll have some finite value over it a number that gets larger and larger and heads to infinity, so this is going to be zero. Now, if we do the same thing, same limit, on the tension, we're going to do the limit as M1 goes to infinity of M1, M2, over the sum, times G. And here, as I learned in calculus, Taking limits, very important. Uh, when M gets bigger and bigger, it's safe to just divide top and bottom by M1 before you take the limit. So let's do that. As we go to infinity, this would be one times M2 over one plus M2 over M1. And now you can see as you take the limit, this will get vanishingly small, go to zero and you'll be left with M2G, which is what we said we expected, that if this is not moving, you're just hanging there with M2G tension and there is no acceleration. Okay, how about if we do another check? Okay, so this was check one. Suppose we check two where mass two goes to infinity, super large. Well, if mass two goes super large, like say you have a big mass here, say as an elephant's, you know, pulling on, say, you know, something very, very, very light, the elephant's gonna fall down, that acceleration's gonna be G. It's gonna be G. 
just falling down. So let's go ahead and see if we, if we get that. So for the acceleration, M2 goes to infinity, and the acceleration is going to be the limit M2 go to infinity, M2 over M1 plus M2 times G. So now we'll do the same thing with the M2, divide top and bottom. So M2 goes to infinity, we'll have here one over M1 over M2 plus M2 over M2 is one. And as M2 goes to infinity, this will go to zero, you'll have G, which is what we said would happen. Now, what about the tension? Let's do that. Let's see what the tension is. That's going to be the limit as M2 goes to infinity. Now the formula is, here it is, M1, M2 over the sum of the masses times G. So we'll do the same you know, trick again. Divide top and bottom by M2. So you have M1 at the top, M1 over M2 plus one. And now as M2 goes off to infinity, you're gonna get zero plus one there. You're gonna get M1G. Now does that make sense? Well, it does, because if this thing is going down with acceleration g, then the acceleration here is g. And what kind of force do you need to get mass 1 to go to acceleration g? Well, m1g. This f equals ma, and a is g. So that, that checks out. Now, I'm really enjoying these checks, so let's do check 3. Now, in check 3, suppose m1 becomes very, very small. You might say, well, you kind of did that when M2 was getting large, but I want to show you, you can, you can play with the equation some more. If M1 is very, very uh, small like this, this is going to just free fall down. So that would be the limit as M1 goes to zero of the acceleration is going to be, here it is, M2 over M1 plus M2 G. And if M1 goes to zero, you get G. This is going to be G, which is, you know, what we expected. And then if we do the limit as M1 goes to zero on the tension, just to cover all the cases. So the tension is M1, M2 over M1 plus M2, G. If M1 goes to zero, you get zero. In other words, you're, you're pulling nothing. You're pulling nothing. So basically the rope is slack as M2 is like falling down. That's cool. Well, one last one last check that I can't resist, and that is M2 goes to zero. Now, if M2 goes to zero, that mass is just gonna sit there. So if we take the limit as M2 goes to zero, that's working with this one. You can see if M2 goes to zero, you can see it. The acceleration is gonna to go to zero. No acceleration. All right, mass is just gonna sit there. So the last check is M2 being zero. Then we're just gonna sit there. Rope's gonna be slack and that's what it says. M2 is zero, zero. When I say slack, I mean like there's, there's no, you're, you're not pulling, you're not pulling because M2 is zero. Everything checked out nicely.